Do you remember the things you worried about as a teenager? When I was in high school, I had a major problem, which was having good grades on top of being Asian. So I needed to escape that Asian geek stereotype, and I was the only Asian in my class. So I tried to go to a lot of parties, always wore dope shoes, because I wanted to be one of the cool kids. And I think being cool is a typical adolescent desire, which makes me worried about science, because science is not cool whatsoever. The image of scientists is really bad. So I'm not surprised that a lot of teenagers don't care about science. And it's kind of hard to get this across to the people that need to hear it the most, the scientists. Because scientists already think that science is the coolest thing there is, and if you don't get that, you must be plain stupid. Also, do you know why scientists look like this? Of course, in real life, no one looks like this, okay? <laughs> But, you know, those classic nerds? Let me tell you, they are blessed, because they have never given a damn about what other people think of them. They rather care about things like how our universe came to existence. They, they have a figured out, man. But all those other poor souls that do care about what's cool, someone needs to tell them that science is cool. Because from a teenager's point of view, it's kind of hard to see. So to make my point, I will use something that scientists love. Linear correlations. Number one, coolness is proportional to interest. The cooler a topic, the more interesting it is especially to young people. And this is true for every topic. So what about scientific topics? Let's say this was the curve of chemistry. Then in the lower left corner, where things are not so cool, not so interesting, there are things like the periodic table of elements and probably everything else you learned about chemistry in school, followed by chemists themselves. I must know I am a chemist. People don't think it's cool. People are not interested either. When I'm at a party, I tell people I'm a chemist, they're like, oh, that's surprising, and then they usually switch the subject. <laughs> I think the only thing that people find cool about chemistry is things that explode. <laughs> uh, and of course, most recently, uh, since Breaking Bad, how to make crystal meth. <laughs> But interest is also dependent on personality. So for nerds, The interest curve is shifted upwards. They come with a positive Y in a set. They bring along a basic interest for topics that are 0% cool. On the other hand, the average teenager, the curves look like this. So for the average teenager, a topic must exhibit a critical coolness for them to be interested at all. So if a topic's not cool enough, they're not interested, or even worse, they have negative interest, which means they think it sucks. And since teenagers are the future of our society, right? This is really important. Why? Number two, interest is proportional to knowledge. The more we are interested, the more we learn. And of course, the learning curve of smart people is slightly steeper than the learning curve of people that are not as smart. But even if you are not as smart, you could get to the same level of knowledge as a smart person by being more interested. So to sum this up, if coolness is proportional to interest and interest is proportional to knowledge, then coolness is proportional to knowledge. If you want to increase knowledge, improve science education, we need to start at step one and make science cooler. So how do we do this? How do we make science cooler? There's obviously no default recipe for that, but I can give you one example I tried. I really like hip-hop. So I am part of a hip-hop dance group at my university. We call it the Campus Dance Crew. <laughs> And uh, once we were booked for the 60th birthday of a professor at RWTH Aachen, And when we heard that he himself had asked us to perform, we found this was hilarious because he was, like, old, right? <laughs> <laughs> But then uh, we realized that hip-hop has been there since the 70s. So a 60-year-old professor might have been a b-boy in his 20s. 
So I'm just I'm fascinated by how hip hop has managed to stay cool until today with, with all the same elements. Anyway, so I asked my girls from the campus dance crew to help me make a hip hop dance video of my research. So my research is essentially about how to attack cancer, cancer cells with toxic drugs without harming healthy cells. And we try to explain this through dance, which sounds a little confusing, so I will show you an excerpt of that video. Our body is a wonderful organism where every cell has its purpose and all cells work together in astonishing perfection. When cancer takes over, this perfection is destroyed from within. Fighting cancer is tricky, because cancer cells look a lot like normal cells, though they behave fatally different. Cancer cells spread quickly, and cancerous tissue grows fast. Today, there are several powerful anti-cancer drugs out there, but fighting cancer is always a fight against our own body, because the drugs cannot tell the difference between cancer cells and normal cells. They will just knock down any cell that comes their way. So the drugs will not be successful on their own. Meet the targeting ligands. Targeting ligands are molecules that lead the drugs specifically to their target. The thank you, thank you. So yeah, as I said, this was a short excerpt. Please watch the full video online. Just Google Dancing Drug Delivery. That's the name of the video. Okay, so obviously I'm not saying you should also go and make a hip-hop dance video of your research. Well, if you do, let me know. I would be glad to be your background dancer. But I'm just saying, if you can even make a hip-hop dance video of your research, I believe there's probably endless possible ways to make science cooler. But of course, you would have to take some time and get creative and think of new ways how you can make science cooler. So I want to encourage you, and especially the scientists and the teachers, to help kids understand how cool science is. Because coolness leads to interest, and interest leads to knowledge. And knowledge matters. Thank you.